welcome to another video on power bi interview questions hope you're watching this series from beginning the next question which you may be asked is what is the difference between calendar and calendar auto the main difference between the calendar and the calendar auto functions in power bi is that calendar auto scans the entire model automatically and returns a date table with all the dates that are presented in the model means what calendar auto is going to do is it's automatically going to find out what all dates you have find out the minimum of that based on that it will find out the start year of the calendar means you can give a parameter in calendar auto where you say okay my year is ending on the march so my start of year is april actually so it's going to based on the minimum date it's going to find out which april is applicable or which january is applicable in case of standard calendar and then it's going to decide a start date and the end date and going to generate the calendar automatically but on the other hand the calendar function requires two dates so calendar on the other hand require you to specify start date and end date for the table if you want to create date table containing a specific range of dates you can use calendar using calendar you could create date table containing all dates between example january 1st 2019 to october 31st 2022 now while calendar auto will try to go ahead and take the last date based on the calendar mean standard calendar start date or standard calendar end date or financial year calendar start date or financial year calendar end date based on the parameter in calendar we can control wherever we want it to start I may like to start that from let's say 15th of April. So when we create some custom calendar, we have done that in. I have done similar kind of stuff in my videos on the calendar across various series. You can watch those videos and that will help you understanding this thing in more. Calendar auto can be useful if you want to create a date table that contain all the dates that are present in your model. Means you don't need to search for it. It will automatically do it for you. But there is a disadvantage. Sometime when you have multiple tables, when you have the dates, you may get a circular dependency error. So calendar auto function may lead to circular dependencies issues when you create relationship in your model, especially when two or more related table have date columns or when you are using calculated tables. So in such scenarios, you may face a circular dependency error you need to be careful while using calendar auto so let me go to the power bi desktop i'm on power bi desktop and here we will try to create the calendar tables using calendar and calendar auto so right now i am on the report view i will go to the table view from the left hand side also known as data view in the past and here I will showcase you I already have a table which is created using the calendar function so the date table using calendar function is basically we have calendar a start date and an and end date so let me showcase you by creating a new table if you click on any of the table on you will get an option of table tools and inside the table tool you have option for new table Click on the new table to create a new table. Now on the left hand side, give a new table name. Let me call it date one. And then you can write down the code for that, the calculated table code in the DAX. So I'll use calendar function. Calendar function requires two arguments, start date and end date. To give a date, I will use a date function. Date function requires three argument year. Let me give year as 2018 month 01 date 01 you can require integers i would like to give an end date again i will use date function for that requiring three argument date year i need or i can give today's end date if i like let's say for simplicity i can give today's end date or if not then i can give the end date of let's say a year i'll give here an end date of 
and it will create a series of dates for me. So basically calendar auto and calendar function creates a series of date. They are sequential or continuous dates. There is no missing dates between the dates which they are generating from the minimum to maximum. There is no missing dates. So right now you can say it is starting from 2018 and ending at 2022, 12, 31. So by default, it is showing the first date, but let me do sort ascending. 2018 1st January and sort descending 31st December 2022. We do sort ascending again and let me change it. Let's say I want to start it from 16th of the month. I can do that pretty much easily. I want to end it on today or some other date. Let me end it on today. Today's function. So every time you have your data refresh, this will get changed to today. And there are reasons why we stop our calendar to today. I have discussed that in various other videos. In this manner, I can create a flexible date calendar. Now I can, based on the today, I can also calculate end of month. There is a function EO month with us. And I can use zero as an argument for current month end date, one as an argument next month end date, minus one as an argument last month end date. And that can also help. And to have a look at it. Let me do sort descending. And as you can see, this is going to end on 31st December 2023. I am recording this video in the month of December 2023. We have looked at how calendar function works. Now time has come that we look how calendar auto function work. I clicked on the date table. I, when I click on date, when I click on a table, I'll get a table tool and inside the table tool, as we have done last time, we need to use new table option. Let me call it as date auto. And I am going to use here calendar auto function. Right now, I'm not giving any argument. So it is starting from 1st January 2018. And for descending, it is ending on 31st December 2021. These are the dates across my all the tables now remember there i was taking 2022 because i was not aware where it is ending here if i want a financial year calendar what i can do is i can say let's say it's ending and it, it is basically the year ended so if you look at the argument when you try to give the argument it's a physical year and month so let's say three is my end month i want to end in march now you can see that it is starting from first april 2017 so basically what happens, the dates are generated from 1st of April 2017. It means it is able to find out a date between 1st of April 2017 and 31st of March 2018. There is a date and because of that, it decided to take 1st of April 2017 as the start date. Let me sort it descending by clicking on the arrow sign. As you can see, it is ending on 3 31 2022, means there is no date after that. So, calendar auto is pretty helpful in that manner. Now, on top of that, you can add the columns using the add column function and create the scripts as you want. There are a few more other things which you can do is you can take a minimum of a date from another table. And remember, when you use minimum function in a column or a table, it is going to Take the complete table and going to give you minimum unless you use filter context to refine it. So in that manner, you can create pretty flexible tables using calendar function or comprehensive date coverage using calendar auto function. So go ahead and try that out for taking time to watch this video. Your curiosity and quest for the knowledge are what's inspiring this series. If you have any question or topics you would like me to explore in this series, please let me know in the comments below. Your support is truly means the world to us. It's the reason we create and share these videos. If you have enjoyed this content and would like to see more, please consider liking, sharing and commenting. It helps us immensely. Until next time, keep learning and stay connected. Thank you.